Welcome to Radiology Case Review, Achilles Tendinosis and Tear. I'm Dr. Dan Colville from Radiologist Headquarters. This episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images that you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige Ultrasound Unit. I'm going to show you cases of tendinosis, partial tears, and complete tears, and I'll review key teaching points throughout. Let's start with case one. This was a male in his late 50s with left Achilles pain. So we're looking at a longitudinal view of the left Achilles tendon. Patients should be scanned in the prone position with their feet hanging over the edge of the table. Mild dorsiflexion of the ankle and ample scanning gel is helpful to optimize imaging. And you should use a high frequency transducer of at least 10 megahertz. In this case, we used a 14 megahertz transducer. So here we're seeing the Achilles tendon attachment at the calcaneus. And this a trace amount of fluid in the retrocalcaneal bursa here, that's normal. It's normal to see up to three millimeters of fluid in the AP dimension. The retro Achilles bursa would be located here, and that normally has no fluid. And this heterogeneously echogenic area here, this is known as Kager's fat pad, and that has a normal appearance. So the Achilles tendon should normally be uniform in thickness and echogenicity when you're looking in the longitudinal plane, as we have here at the inferior aspect. But notice as we move superiorly, the Achilles tendon starts to expand, and it has more of a fusiform heterogeneous configuration. We've got these areas of hypoechogenicity at the deep or anterior aspect of the tendon. And then as we move more superiorly, the tendon starts to assume a more normal caliber and configuration. Now we're starting to get into the soleus muscle here. And then the tendon looks even more normal at the superior aspect. Now moving back to the inferior aspect of the calcaneus, we've added some vascular flow imaging. Here we're using microvascular flow or MV flow, which detects flow in very small and slow flowing vessels. And you can see that this part of the Achilles tendon inferiorly has no flow because it's normal. But then as we move superiorly, that expanded part of the tendon does show some hyperemia, which indicates tendinosis. We also have some reactive changes in the adjacent soft tissues. And as we move superiorly, that abnormal hyperemia resolves and we have just normal tendon again. All right, now at the top of the tendon, we've turned the transducer 90 degrees, and now we're in the transverse plane. Here's the Achilles tendon. Now let's move inferiorly. You can notice that the Achilles tendon is starting to expand and becomes heterogeneously hypochoic at that deep aspect with these ill-defined areas of heterogeneity, indicating tendinosis. And that's even more apparent on real-time imaging here of the transverse images superior to inferior. Notice all this heterogeneous hypoechogenicity at the expanded aspect of the Achilles tendon corresponding to tendinosis. If you look closely, there's a small anechoic area that we just passed. That corresponds to a partial thickness tear right there. And when we add microvascular flow, we again see increased vascularity throughout that area of abnormal tendon, indicating tendinosis. Compare that to the normal right side, and we don't see any vascular flow, which is also normal. The normal tendon does not have significant hyperemia. And indeed, it's a great idea to compare both tendons. Here we have transverse imaging. There's the abnormal left tendon measuring 13 millimeters in the AP dimension and the normal right tendon measuring only eight millimeters in the AP dimension. So the tendon normally measures less than 10 millimeters AP dimension and will normally have a flat or concave margin at that anterior or deep aspect, not this convex abnormal margin that we see here. All right, let's look at case two. This was a 50 year old female with posterior ankle pain. And this is another feature that's quite helpful, this panoramic feature where you can image the entire tendon. Here's the calcaneus with the calcaneal insertion. And we see normal tendon here expanding out in fusiform enlargement, similar to the last case before it tapers normally. And then we have soleus muscle here. And there's Kager's fat pad again, heterogeneously echogenic. When we zoom into that abnormal area, we have power Doppler here showing increased vascular flow. Let's again switch to microvascular or MV flow, which will detect slow flow in very small vessels. It also does so with a higher resolution than Doppler imaging and at a fast frame rate showing all this hyperemia indicating tendinosis which we also see in the transverse view. This patient also had left posterior ankle pain and in the similar location we see expansion and heterogeneity of that Achilles tendon but here we see more focal hypoechogenicity with disruption of the tendon fibers. We even see vascular flow on color Doppler imaging markedly increased with microvascular flow imaging. On transverse imaging, we see an actual hypoechoic cleft indicating a partial thickness tear. And using microvascular flow imaging with tissue suppression, we see marked vascularity of that tendon. On real-time transverse imaging, we can get a better look at that hypoechoic cleft corresponding to a partial thickness tear of the Achilles tendon, surrounded by tendinosis. So let's look at key points for case one and two, which you can also find in the episode show notes. So Achilles tendon is actually the strongest tendon in the body. It originates from the soleus and gastrocnemius muscles and inserts onto the posterior calcaneal tuberosity. Achilles tendon tears are the most common ankle tendon injury. And when you see tendon enlargement greater than one centimeter in AP dimension, that's an abnormal tendon. 
Tendinosis can be considered when you see fusiform hypocoic swelling of the tendon without fiber disruption, and you'll often see increased blood flow. Again, use power Doppler or microvascular flow imaging if you have it, as that will increase sensitivity for hyperemia detection. A partial tear can be diagnosed when there's a hypocoic or anechoic cleft that disrupts the tendon fibers. An ultrasound is highly sensitive and specific for both partial and complete Achilles tears. Speaking of complete tears, let's look at case number three. This was a male in his early 50s with ankle pain posteriorly. Here we have a longitudinal view of the left Achilles tendon showing frayed tendon margins with this hypocoic fluid and this larger region of echogenic abnormality inferiorly. As we look more closely, we are seeing these tapered margins of the super aspect of the tendon with a large tendon gap here filled with hypocoic fluid, and this echogenic area corresponds to hemorrhage and herniated fat, indicating a full thickness Achilles tendon tear or rupture. Transverse images show a very abnormal and large heterogeneous left Achilles tendon compared to that normal right Achilles tendon here that has a flat margin compared to this convex margin. And we also see this full thickness tear on transverse images here compared to the normal right tendon. Let's take a look at the transverse real-time imaging moving superior to inferior. Notice this hypoechoic rind surrounding the Achilles tendon. That's the inflamed peritenon. And then we see the full thickness tear in fairly here, this echogenic material with tendon disruption. Also, notice this small rounded echogenic focus at the medial aspect of the Achilles tendon. That's the plantaris tendon, which we sometimes see, particularly in the setting of full thickness tears at the medial aspect of the tendon. So full thickness tears usually occur two to six centimeters proximal to the calcaneal insertion, and you'll see complete tendon fiber disruption with retraction. You might also see refractive shadowing at the tendon stumps. We didn't have that in this case, but it can sometimes be a helpful secondary feature. And the tendon gap may fill with mixed echogenicity fluid or hemorrhage, or even a portion of adjacent fat pad as we had in this case. The plantaris tendon is a thin tendon at the medial aspect of the Achilles that can mimic intact Achilles tendon fibers, as the plantaris usually stays intact with Achilles tear, so don't be fooled. The plantaris is absent in about 20% of patients. And dynamic imaging with passive ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion can be very helpful revealing tendon retraction at the tear site. The Achilles tendon is surrounded by a peritenon as opposed to a true synovial tendon sheath. So think about peritendinitis when you see hypocoic swelling or anechoic fluid adjacent to the tendon, as we saw at the superior tendon margin in this case. All right, let's look at the final case. This was a 60-year-old male who had a history of chronic Achilles tendon rupture. And on this panoramic view, we see a very abnormal Achilles tendon. It's heterogeneous. We have multiple areas of shadowing. Here's an echogenic area of shadowing at the inferior margin indicating calcification. So let's zoom in longitudinally. Here's the calcaneus with the Achilles calcaneal insertion, and it's very abnormal. We see this echogenic region corresponding to a high-grade partial thickness tear. The more superior tendon is heterogeneous and abnormal with areas of hypoechogenicity. We see this echogenic area corresponding to a high-grade partial thickness tear at the mid-substance portion. Here is that echogenic shadowing area corresponding to calcification. Just an extremely abnormal, thickened, heterogeneous tendon, indicating chronic tendinosis and high-grade tears, with areas of shadowing. Now, when we look at the transverse imaging, here's the normal right tendon. It has that nice flat margin, and it's less than a centimeter in AP dimension. The abnormal left side is abnormally thickened, measuring 1.2 centimeters. Let's add power Doppler imaging, and we don't see any internal vascularity on that abnormal tendon. When we add microvascular flow imaging, we still only see minimal increased flow. And then when we use microvascular flow with tissue suppression, which really makes flow even more conspicuous, we only see a few dots of flow. So that kind of confirms that we're seeing a chronic process here in this abnormal Achilles tendon. And along those lines, we see these echogenic shadowing areas corresponding to calcification. And here's the patient's comparison ankle x-ray. This is a lateral view showing an exaggerated plantar arch. And then we see some posterior enthesopathic spurring at the calcaneus here where the Achilles tendon attaches, as well as this calcification here more superiorly, which is what we saw on that previous image. And this is the area of the Achilles tendon. You can see that it's a little thickened here, and we've got edema within Kager's fat pad. All right, so key points for this case, the Achilles tendon ossification can occur with prior tendon rupture, surgery, or even repetitive microtrauma and it will appear as echogenic areas of shadowing on ultrasound. Be careful because scar tissue in a chronic tear can simulate tendon fibers, and those dynamic maneuvers can be helpful. You might also see fibrous bridging in the setting of a chronic Achilles tendon tear. All right, thank you for joining me, and thank you again to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, please subscribe to the video podcast or on YouTube. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, click the YouTube community tab or follow us on social media. Until next time, radiology is life.